All right, everybody. It's Kyle once again with another episode of Hillsboro 100 and Real. And today I'm very lucky to have a longtime friend, Omar Sultan. Omar, thanks for being with me today, buddy. Hey, Kyle. What's up? I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Now, I've been looking forward to doing this. I've known you, Omar, since when did you start? Were you a freshman in high school? Yeah, I think I was a freshman. That's about the time. Okay. So Omar started training with us at Newell's Training. He was a freshman playing football. Uh, you know, some of his buddies, Jim, then he started coming. And, you, and um, you're one of my favorite stories, man, just because of the success you've become. And I know, you know, uh, we'll go into the, the formal schooling system, how that doesn't, that's not everybody's cup of tea, right? And I know because I was kind of the same way, but I want, so we're going to dive into that. But why don't, before we get into that, just kind of tell everybody, where you're living, uh, how old you are now, and then I'll start diving into some questions. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm living here in Hillsboro. I grew up here since 2004. Um, I'm 22 and uh, still still just living <laughs> right here in Burrow. So <laughs> you can call me a townie, I guess. Yeah, man. So where did you come from in 2004? Uh, we were in Hoboken. Okay. Uh, that's where I, I mean, I'm, yeah, we were in Hoboken, and it, it was so long. I was only so little, so yeah, yeah, it's hard to really even think of like where we were. Yeah, yeah, maybe about five years old at that point. Yeah. And as far as siblings, it's just you and your sister, correct? Yeah, now funny thing is Sheila's been Hoboken again, so. She moved up. Yeah, because she, she works in the city, so. Okay. So yeah, she wasn't a fan of the whole commute. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. So, <clears throat> after high school, what like when you were about to graduate, right? That could be a, and, and I think it's good because you're not that far removed from that. That mm-hmm. could be a, a, that could be. It's a very scary time for people because you're going into the next phase of life, and you're kind of just out there on your own, right? Like people right. say, oh, you got to do this next, this next. Yeah. But as you were graduating high school, what was your thought process? What did you want to do? Like, wh- where was your mindset? At that time, I just wanted to play football and get a degree because I figured at that point if I'm getting the degree I'm probably doing something right um and that was really it like if I was just following the quo of everyone else I would somehow be on the right path I was thinking you know I was gonna work in this office in the city I was gonna smoke cigars all day and make you know a couple million dollars a year it became really evident probably three months into college that I was like, wow, this is, this is a whole load of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then, you know, I was always kind of landscaped in high school and uh, I did it throughout college to pay for school and just do it, did whatever I could. I got into detailing cars and uh, I bounced around from Bloomsburg. I left there. I went to RV and then from R I studied business at Bloomsburg at RV. I, st- <laughs> I studied physical therapy. And then I studied engineering at Rowan. Um, And it was this past fall in 2019, I was at Rowan. um, And I'm like, you know, I I think this is crazy. I'm I'm like, the the amount of money of of a line of credit, I felt like with a $100,000 line of credit, I could do a lot more than get a degree. So that fall, I started trying to start a business. And then in the spring, I really started the business and it took off and I was taking classes online at Rowan. And then it went so full scale, we bottlenecked and I had employees and trucks and it just, it was in the rear view. So, (laughs) yeah. So going back to Bloomsburg Mm -hmm. and then RV in the middle and then Rowan, did you continue playing football at Bloomsburg or were you done after high school? I did. I played there for a year and a half. And then it got to the point where I'm like, this doesn't really pay. And it's just, it was a full-time job, honestly. And I was like, this isn't going to be my career. Cause there were guys there that were like really, you know, pursuing the NFL. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm just not physically capable of being that size or being that good. (laughs) It's really like those guys are gifted, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And that's good that you were able to see that and not just hang on to something that was kind of just a, a fantasy you know you took it to where you could take it and you learn what you had to learn from it yeah absolutely so 
you so you went to RV and then you went to Rowan. So when you go into Rowan, you get this idea, okay, hey, this is probably best spent starting a business or something. What may have that thought? Because a lot of people like the idea of starting a business, but as soon as they go down that path, they realize how much work is actually involved and it scares them and they turn away. So what it was is I got a job at Robert Wood Johnson uh, doing uh, as a physical therapist aide at, while I was at RV. And everyone was saying, that's so awesome. You're going to be so successful, you know, all this. And I'm like, I hate this. I hate the corporate world. I don't like it. People would laugh if you say, you know, I cut grass for a living, but like, I don't know, you know, I, I started looking into like what it could be. And at that point, I, I kind of like just swore off working in an office. Like I could not do it. Absolutely not. Um, and I don't know. I just always kind of felt like I could be a good leader and time to start the business. I, I was just like, you know, you take out all these loans for college. Why not just do it for the business? Yeah. And it like, you know, so that was kind of my thing. You know, it, it was like, it, it, it's all just numbers when it comes down to the end. And sure. there's no guarantee of a job at the end of your degree. No, you see it. I saw all my friends go through it this year, especially when they all graduated and the country was in a pandemic. Yeah. So <laughs> I was kind of like, well, I think I kind of picked the right path for myself. Sure. So you, so I think that that's brilliant and brilliant foresight. So <clears throat> you went back and you took out a loan to start the business or did you use your student loan to start the business? No, I went back and I started a loan. I took out a loan. Well, I was, I owned a truck in college. I bought it when I was a junior. Um, it was a light duty truck. It wasn't like a, you know, serious work truck. Um, but then, you know, and I started doing jobs with it. And I, I think my first month in, I got someone called me for like a huge job. And I was like, yeah, and I got the job. And then I'm like, holy shit. I need a lot of equipment. <laughs> so lo and behold, I just kind of went to the dealership and bought another truck. <laughs> and it just, dude, it just kind of went from there. And as things have been bought, more businesses come in and now we're just busy as ever. So I kind of got over the fear of the whole starting the business because, you know, when you buy something on a line of credit versus taking it out for college, that asset still has value. Sure. And that asset can make you money right there. Now, I'm not saying college isn't a good thing. I definitely learned a lot and there's definitely plenty of avenues to make plenty of money going through college. But for me, that wasn't the way. Yeah, yeah, and you're gonna find, it's a, uh, I always say that about our kids, man. I ain't sending them to college unless they want just something very specific or they get a, a scholarship or something. Yeah kind of saw like when you see what everybody else is doing if you do the opposite usually you're going to be right you know, and you see all your buddies now graduated in the spring times are a little weird right now they might be having yeah. trouble finding jobs and all that so go back so you get this first job right mm -hmm. how did you get the job first of all that first job i i ordered postcard mailers and i went to my the neighborhood i grew up in here in hillsborough and i was putting them in mailboxes which, yeah, I know is legal, but when you start a business, you kind of got to, yeah. you know. Do what you got to do. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, someone I knew from when I was a kid called me and was like, no way you started this business. I need to, like, rip out my entire yard and solve the drainage issues, and I want to, like, go decorative with it. And I'm, you know, contacting people that I know that I've worked for in the past, and I'm like, I could use some help writing this quote. And I wrote it and I got it. I just, I got the email back that says, looks good. Let's proceed with a signed copy of the estimate. And I was like, <laughs> I just started laughing. I'm like, holy shit, you believe that? <laughs> and from there, it was, it was just like, it, it was like having blinders on at that point. You know, nothing else really mattered besides getting the job done and continuing to get business. Yeah. Now, with that first job, too, you have some logistical stuff. So you needed more equipment. Mm -hmm. Right. So you went out and got the equipment. Right. And then we, you didn't have any employees yet, right? Yeah, that that is the biggest challenge of starting a business. And I think if if any, I, I don't know why 
people always talk about, you know, finding the funds is the scariest thing to start a business when it's really not. It's finding the good people because, sure. you know, those, those aren't things you can take out in a loan. Those are people that you have to pay at the end of the week and they have to be good people. And I was fortunate enough to have some really good friends of mine to help me through that first job. And as I became more of an established business, some of the, you know, uh, professional guys in town that are like landscape employees started finding attraction in my business and we started talking and I started hiring guys full time. So, you know, it was, it was a pretty rough road to find people in the start. Uh, there was times where, you know, someone wouldn't come in and we have, you know, 30 houses to cut and it's just me in that week. And it's, it gets scary, you know, but it's well worth it. <laughs> it's sure. well, well worth it. Yeah. Sure. So <clears throat> I did. Um, that was when you obtained that first job? What's that? Years ago was that first job. How many years ago? Yeah. That was this year. That was 2020. 2020 with the first job. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, how many people do you have working for you? This uh, going into this spring, three. Three. Nice. Three full time. Yeah. So it's uh, it's funny because when I started it, I was thinking I maybe next year I'll have someone work for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, there's only so much you can do on your own. You talked about that bottleneck. Mm -hmm. So that could limit you if you didn't have the manpower. And, uh, you know, with, the, with these the staff of yours, are they doing everything? The lawns? Are they doing snow removal? Are they doing... Yeah, they, so we only do commercial snow uh, work. Uh, we do two lots, one in Clark and one in Bedminster. And that will obviously for that, we hire a lot of people. Um, but those are my main guys. Those are the guys that get the main amount of hours. And they are in a sense, <laughs> sub managers of sites. They are the boss in, in my in my eyes, uh, because they're running the show. It, when it comes to snow, I'm kind of just uh, dealing with the back end of the associations or the realty companies and, you know, waiting for approvals on services uh, because that's the biggest thing. You know, if, if they don't want to salt a lot, you're not going to do it. So there's a lot of th those. My main guys are like my family. Nice. And, and if some of them, you said, have been in the industry for a long time? Yeah, I'm actually the youngest person in this company. <laughs> I believe that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think one is 50, one's 48, and one's 23. Okay. So, yeah. Um, it's definitely, uh, so they, they have some serious experience. And uh, one is one of my longest friends, actually. Oh, uh, yeah? He's, he's the, the manager of the company, in a sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, for people out there listening, a lot of people, again, have ideas. They want to start something. So, so you... I think the, the big lesson for people is you put stuff out there and you weren't waiting for things to be perfect. You didn't even know how you were going to do this first job, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't wait. You didn't wait for everything to be perfect. But no. what's starting this business and now it's not just the, the landscaping stuff, figure out, okay, I got to get a website. I got to get a logo. I got to do stuff. I got to incorporate where it is. I got to hire people process with that stuff like how did you figure that stuff out what was your daily mindset oh man i just watched a lot of youtube and i just did a lot of searching um it's actually like when you think about it you just i would look at how businesses are structured and i would see they have a logo okay that's that's something i'm going to do this week and then you just knock down that checklist and you figure it out you know it, the internet is a great thing how do you get a logo? You know, you type it into Google and you figure it out pretty quick. <laughs> um, there's services like that. And that's the whole thing. Even with doing the legal paperwork of the business, like there's services for that, that'll help you. And honestly, you have to find people in your field. Let's say someone wanted to start a gym. Cause I'm sure if someone came to you and said, you know, I'm thinking of starting a gym, you'd probably help them. I would help someone. I think it's so yeah. cool that people want to start a business it would be so cool if everyone had some sort of business to offer um because it's just like you kind of understand what it's like to you know not know what you're going to make this year and it could be great or it could be horrible 
yeah. but you're doing it for the best of someone else's interest in a sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's on you. The responsibility falls on you, man. It's much more exciting, much more risk, much more exciting. Mm -hmm. You learn a ton, man. You learn more in the first year in business than you will get in any MBA, any, any grad school. Yeah, seriously. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I learned more. The first job I was, all I had was a leaf blower and I, I was so eager ever to, to make any money with it. And I went to this house and the guy talked me down to $150 and knowing now what I know, it should have been a you know, maybe a $1,500 leaf cleanup. And I ended up owing my guys three times the amount of money than I actually charged for the job. And that right there was the, the biggest lesson I've ever learned, which was if people don't want to pay, you might as well just sit at home because yeah. it, it doesn't even, it, yeah. That, I, I learned more that day than I've ever learned in my life. Sure. Yeah. Sure, man, and that's uh. And uh, you can learn that. Don't really learn it until you go through it. Yeah, you know? seriously. <laughs> then you, now you absorb it and you move forward, man. So what's what's on the plan? I mean, we just started 2021. What, what's the vision for the business this year? So this year we're actually, I sold a lot of the equipment that we have. And we went, I'm real big. Um, not in the sense of the size and the scale of the company, but of the size that we're doing. We finished the year with, uh, it was about a month and a half long new uh, landscape design install. That's what we've been getting into. And that's the path we're gonna take is new landscape design. Um, so we based everything, all the equipment that I just ordered is all custom. It's all, it's all super heavy duty stuff. Even the dump truck we ordered is, you know, it's custom fit to exactly how we're gonna run the logistics of this business. We're not. Although we will continue to take in maintenance accounts, we're looking for more, you know, 10, 15 jobs a year. That's it. Okay. Like bigger, that that's the kind of the hardscape aspect that we're looking to get into. Okay. So that's going to be the primary aspect of the business. And you'll continue to do lawns here. And maybe you're having a, somebody that's just in charge of that type of stuff. Exactly. Like, I can't, I don't see my company ever going more than two lawn mowing crews. Um, I don't want to do that. I know guys that have 300 accounts and, you know, like, yeah, they're making money obviously, but it's, you're dealing with 300 complaints every single day because yeah, someone missed a spot. and it's, yeah. you know, it, I don't want to do that. I'd like to deal with, I, I just, then again, it's all personal preference of how big you want to be. Some guys want to be huge. Yeah. It, the, it, sometimes the number, the profits are all the same, no matter how big you are. So it is. Yeah. 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 People fall into that trap and they can lose sight of, I mean, one of the main things I think when people start a business is design it around the life that you want. Don't exactly. you know, just chase this, you know, and look, I've fallen down that path before where all of a sudden you're chasing how many people we're going to have. But it's like, what are we doing? You know, this doesn't make any sense. You know, it's kind of, but that, yeah. that's good. The insight you already have at this, at this youth, man, because you still got your whole career ahead of you. So that's the vision for 2021. And I'll put it in the, people, the name of the company. Okay. And what, what areas do you service? Oh, what do we serve? We service Somerset County, Hunterdon County. Um, but to be honest with you, Kyle, for the right job, we'll drive anywhere. Okay. You know, if we're going to be there for two months, we'll, you know, we'll rent a hotel room for two months and we'll, we'll station out because that's the type of business we're doing. I'm talking about, you know, ripping out the backyard, re-elevating it and building the whole thing different type of deal um, and have our maintenance crews run here in Central Jersey. So finding the work is, we're everywhere at this point. Doesn't okay. Really matter. Very cool. And, and what, for, so people, I'm not done yet, but what, what, what's the name of the company for when people are looking you up? Uh, Sultan Services, LLC. Okay. And I'll make sure that's in the show notes and all that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, so being that you're 22 right now, uh, graduating high school wasn't that long ago. 
-hmm. But if you knew what you knew a couple of years removed, so at this point, what would you tell yourself when you're getting ready to graduate? Like, what advice would you give Omar when he's graduating high school? Uh, probably get two jobs. <laughs> get two jobs, man. Yeah, that's because uh, it hit me. I think, like I said, a couple months into college, I was like, dude, I don't want to sit here partying in some shitty basement. Like, I want to own a boat and a house and like maybe a few. And that that's like what it's going to take. I don't, a lot of people have to understand, like, when you start a business, you sacrifice your social life in a sense especially starting yeah. out like if you don't if you're not he's like you're, you're probably not doing something right you yeah know? yeah there's only so much attention you can give stuff the more you spread that out the less results you're going to get exactly yeah you know within the business um very cool man what uh and you said you worked for a Correct. I'm sorry, you cut out there. Sorry about that. You said you worked for a landscaper in high school, right? Yeah. Yeah. I worked for um, these guys. Uh, their business was Lawn Star, now Star Services. Uh, and they, it was so cool to watch because they were, you know, it's like two guys. And now they're, you know, <laughs> they're, they're big, like, you know, commercial maintenance. They, they do. They, they do some huge stuff. Uh, <laughs> I think, I don't know how many trucks they have now. That's how many trucks they have. So it's cool to see like what avenue you want to take and just the, the dream that you can build. It's, sure. it's crazy, you know, and it doesn't mean now, you have to do what people think is right. Yeah. With those guys, were they a good resource mentor for you as you were starting your business? Did Absolutely. you go to them and say, hey guys, I'm going to start? Yeah. And they were excited about it. They were really excited about it. They told me that you should do it, you know, and uh, they never told me to drop out of college, but they would say like, you, like, what do you, what, like, they, they pretty much told me like, we know you well enough that you're not going to sit in an office. Yeah. And, yeah. So, but yeah, man, any question I ever had, they were there for me. Anytime something broke, they were helping me. So. Yeah, that's where I got my energy to help other people start businesses. And even my guys, if someone said I wanted to start a business, absolutely. I yeah. yeah, I think that's the coolest thing. It is, man. I think a lot of people, if they let their pride or their ego get in the way, they, they don't want that, right? Lou, you talk mm -hmm. to business, I'm like, but just like you said, is, hey, you want to go start your own thing? I'll help you. Let's go. You know, this is, you're just putting that message. I mean, because they absorb some of your philosophy. Obviously, they make it their own, but they're further spreading that and that mission to the rest of the world. Man, there's plenty to go around too. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like it. <laughs> there must be two thousand landscaping companies in this area, and yeah. clearly everyone is still staying alive. So, I don't know why people tend to think like, "Oh, well, they're going to take our customers." No, no one's taking the customers. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, you have that scarcity mindset. Yeah. That's what's going to get. You know, it's going to be hard to get stuff when you have a scarcity mindset. And a lot of people don't understand the the mindset. So let's talk about that real quick before I got mm -hmm. one more question after that. Okay. I know, obviously, I have in business, right? You're going to have ups and downs. You're oh, going to yeah. have a thousand problems every week, man, that come your way. What do you do when you start feeling like, man, my mindset's going the wrong way or man, I'm feeling like I'm getting into a little bit of a funk. How do you get out of that? Is it, is it exercise? Is it like, what do you do? Exercise helps, but actually what I do personally is I'll get on YouTube and I'll just start watching a whole different service and kind of, I almost do like a mental reset. I put myself in the mindset of where I was when I was starting this business and I was teaching myself, you know, okay, well, how do we, you know, build a retaining wall this tall? And then I'm thinking, well, if I'm going through something really rough, let's say it was a horrible week, you know, I'll just start researching. How do I build a water fountain in a pool? You know, because when you get back into that eagerness, that fight, that wanting to learn, it completely sets me back to like, okay, the problems I'm having now versus the problems I had when I started, 
are nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, the, it, it's good to have, you know, some problems when you're in business. Cause if you don't have any problems, you probably don't have any business. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Yeah. It, it's kind of just setting yourself back, humbling yourself. I think that's for myself, what helps the most. Very cool, man. And what's your what's your daily your daily uh, schedule like? Like, what what are you disciplined with it? What does it look like? No, I have no discipline with my daily schedule. To be honest with you, <laughs> I'll either work out at eight in the morning, I'll work out at six o'clock at night. I'm the worst with that. Um, but it pretty much, I'll tell you this much: it starts with the coffee, and emails, and then whatever's built into the day already. Um, and then from there, it's research uh and if i feel like we can do something if we could build a water fountain i'll start looking into pricing on equipment and what it's going to take and who has it in this area and the biggest thing is is when you drive around and you look at houses and you see does that person have a water fountain in their pool because then their neighbor's going to want it and it's 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 a constant constant thing you're trying you're trying to figure out what's going to be popular and you, that's that's my job, in my opinion, is is finding the work, running the business, uh, and making sure the quality is done right. So, yeah. sure. And as far as at this point finding the business, is that what are you doing for marketing? Are you, are you still just getting out there, hitting down, getting cards out there? Like, what are you doing? Um, we're actually pretty much just kind of putting it on social media, and I have a couple things in the works. Um, one big thing for this we have a promo video coming and i have one big thing that's kind of a secret uh because i don't want anyone else to take it <laughs> uh that i might do this spring other than that it's just been word of mouth um we've been really big on facebook in the in the groups uh you know when people call me they say you have like 10 recommendations on facebook and i'm like well hopefully they're all good so <laughs> i don't yeah. know uh it, it's it's kind of come to me slash I, I actually, I can't tell you that many of my advertisements have gotten me work, but it might all play along into like brand recognition. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's that whole concept of people are seeing you over here. Maybe they didn't hire you because they saw that, but now their neighbor says something to them. Oh, I've seen that guy before. Right. You know, so it's, you hit him from multiple different angles. And I don't think a lot of people understand that, that it's a long-term game with a lot of these, you know, clients that are coming into your life. Exactly. That's, that's why, you know, the brand recognition and people uh, referring me is why I actually didn't put landscaping in the actual business name because I didn't know, you know, what, what, what if we, what if I get a job to build a pool and I build a pool? So no one's going to call me to build a pool if it's Sultan Services Landscaping. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's why I just kept it how it is. Smart. Yeah. Smart. So where do you see yourself in five years? Like, What's your life look like? What's the business look like? In five, so the when people ask me that, I just say in five years, I want the business to be self-sufficient, whereas I don't have to call my guys in the morning. I just have to find, just find the work. Um, and other than that, I just need, I would like to see my guys progress as well. Like I, one of my guys just bought a brand new truck and it was like, that's the coolest thing, dude. <laughs> When, when your guys are doing well, like, you know, I'm doing well. So I would say I'd like to see my guys do very, very well. And the three guys I have now make over six figures a year. If that can be the case, then wherever I am is probably going to be great too. Great. Yeah. Great. And where, where people find out about you if they're interested in your services and, and, you know, they have a project that they're thinking about, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you, Omar? I would just say my phone number. Uh, call or text is fine or my email um, the website is being rebuilt right now so that's probably not the best avenue so call or text is probably the best mm -hmm. okay so I'll put that number in there man um, yeah man but I'm proud of you man you've done great man you're inspired mm -hmm. you're an inspiration I appreciate it I appreciate all the help you've given me especially in high school man that uh, going to your gym is learning uh, the things that you taught me how to deal with things mentally is where I kind of came to like a self realization of taking a step back. That's been how I've done this is taking a step back, realizing that like, okay, this isn't that crazy. 
yeah. <laughs> taking those deep breaths and doing the stomach breathing. That's, yeah. I'd probably say, going back to that one question, that's how I deal with the days is stomach breathing. Yeah. yeah. It's huge, man. Little skills like that where people, a lot of people say, I don't know for that, but you realize it can get you just to calm down to think clearly. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's cool, man, that you learn stuff back at the gym in high school that, you know, propelled you forward. And, and I always tell you, right, the gym isn't really about the training. You know, yeah. any, and I'm not just saying our gym, I'm saying when you're, when you're trying, it's more about what's going on up here, and what you're learning, Absolutely. you know, and then you learn that and, um, yeah, man, you got, you got a really bright future, man. And I'll, I'll always be in your corner supporting you, man. So thank you. Appreciate it. Of course. Same goes to you. Yeah, I know, man. I yeah. know. I appreciate the support you gave us when we opened the gym back in May. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. I once I heard you were opening, I'm like, oh, this is like we got to kickstart this shit. This is gonna be cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. because I, I when when you were opening, I was kind of opening myself too. So I'm like, all right, we're we're gonna do this, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, did so, it, <laughs> <laughs> we did it, man. And that's yeah. uh, you know, I look forward to the next challenge, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously. Okay, let me just bring this to a stop, buddy.